And of course, you woke up at what, 8 this morning? Right. And then you, you cleaned up your apartment really nicely so you could show us what it looks like? Yeah, I want you to come over if you feel like it. It's, it I haven't done any dusting or vacuuming or anything. I do that on Sundays. But, uh -huh. uh, on July 22, 1991, 32-year-old Tracy Edwards fled an apartment building on 25th Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, with handcuffs still dangling from his wrist. He managed to flag down a passing police car and he told the officers some freak named Jeffrey Dahmer had lured him to the apartment 213. When the officers walked with Edwards back to the apartment, they uncovered a crime scene that would leave them with nightmares for the rest of their lives. My name is Sheesh Merriweather and I'm the founder of Crime Viral Online. Today I'll be doing what I do best, which is talking about serial killers. Our video today is inside Jeffrey Dahmer's Apartment of Horrors. But first, here is a treat for all you true crime fans. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership founded by filmmakers. Their team of producers and curators brings together premium content that dives deep into important documentary subjects. Magellan TV is some of the best collections available in true crime, history, science, nature and space. There are so many great choices, it's hard to stop watching once you start. There are over 3,000 documentaries to choose from and programs are added on a weekly basis. Even better, there's a growing selection of shows available in 4K without additional cost. You can watch Magellan TV on any device or connected TV. You can even cast from your phone to your TV. It's super easy to use. So check it out now. Click the link below to get a full month free. I have been binge watching Cyber Crimes with Ben Hammersley. This rabbit hole of gripping episodes all about piracy, the dark net, scams, heist and cyber wars is great viewing if you're interested in not only how to keep safe online, but also you want to learn how online criminals use the World Wide Web to wreak havoc on other users. Now let's get you back to the serial killers. When Tracy Edwards first met Jeffrey Dahmer in a shopping mall, he said that Dahmer seemed like a regular guy. After they talked for a while, Dharma said he was a professional photographer and would Edwards be interested in posing for nude pictures in exchange for $100. Edwards, a father of six, agreed to go back to Dharma's apartment for a beer. Edwards noticed a terrible smell in the apartment as soon as he walked through the door. But Dharma just explained that plumbing in the building was off and that management were dealing with a broken sewer pipe. The pair then drank together for a while, and in the background on the TV, Dharma was playing his favourite film, The Exorcist 3. There were many objects around the room that would have been a warning sign if Edwards had known exactly whose company he was keeping. There were ropes, restraints, hammers and saws scattered around the place. Then Dharma distracted Edwards by asking him to look at the fish tank. When Edwards turns to look, Dharma pulls out a knife and forced a pair of handcuffs onto him. Dharma then appeared to slip into a trance-like state. He was rocking back and forth manically and chanting to himself. In that moment, the serial killer is entering a phase where they reveal their true sadistic self. Many surviving victims have testified how they distinctly remember the exact moment when this switch in the serial killer's persona took place. The mask of superficial charm slips and they have on many occasions said there was a distinct change in the eyes and within a flash the killer's true violent intentions emerge to the surface. We do have another video on this channel, Seven Phases of Serial Killing Explained if you would like to check that out too. Dharma and Edwards got into a scuffle as both serial killer and intended victim tried to overpower each other. Edwards later testified that Dharma screamed at him that he was going to eat his heart. Edwards later said in court that he knew at that point he was going to die, and he told himself you might as well die fighting. Edwards managed to convince Dharma to let him go to the bathroom. Once he saw the opportunity, Edwards escaped into the hallway and out the building. He then summoned the Milwaukee police officers who were passing by. They tried to get the handcuffs off with their own key, but this didn't work. So instead, they agreed to walk with Edwards back to Dharma's apartment to try and find the key. Once inside the apartment, Milwaukee police officers Robert Ralph and Rolf Muella asked Dharma where the key for the handcuffs was. Dharma said the key is in the bedroom. 
Officer Mueller went into the bedroom when he noticed a large knife under the bed. He also noticed a bedside dresser table with a set of Polaroid pictures that had a background that matched the interior of the apartment that he was stood in. When he took a better look, he realized that these Polaroids were of victims who had been decapitated, dismembered, and posed in disturbing positions. In total, there were 74 Polaroids as part of this twisted collection. Dharma freaked out as soon as he saw Mueller holding these twisted photo collection, and he tried to escape the apartment, but he was restrained on the floor by the officers. He told them, for what I did, I should be dead. The officers called for backup, and whilst the second squad car was on the way, Mueller went to find out where that terrible odour in the apartment was coming from. He looked in the fridge, and there he saw the severed head of one victim staring right back at him. Eventually, the officers uncovered at least 11 corpses. There was a pan on the stove that contained human brains. Hands and feet had been boiled in another pan. Three human heads were found in the fridge. There were glass jars that contained male genitals, preserved in what appeared to be a saline solution. And the bottom drawer of one cabinet also contained a whole human skeleton, and plastic bags contained many severed limbs. Every officer who attended the crime scene had to undergo specialist counselling to recover properly from the horrors what they saw. Whilst crime scene technicians worked through the night to piece together exactly what had took place in apartment 213, Dharma was interviewed at the Milwaukee police station. His interview lasted six hours between 1.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. He confessed everything and even said, I think in some way I wanted it to end, even if it meant my own destruction. Dharma admitted to killing 16 men in Milwaukee and Ohio. Six of the men he had killed in the apartment were just in the past few weeks. He said he decapitated them, dismembered them, defleshed them, and threw whatever was left in the trash. He also said some of the bodies were placed in acid to liquefy them, and he shared that it takes on average about an hour to boil a human head. The detective who first interviewed Dharma, Detective Patrick Kennedy, thought the whole confession was fake. He was like, he's making all of this up. This cannot be real. But whilst he was interviewing the suspect, his colleagues were assembling loads of bags of evidence back at the apartment, which supported everything that Dharma was saying. One crime scene technician later said, it was more like dismantling someone's museum than an actual crime scene. Over the next two weeks, Dharma worked side by side with the detectives as they went through the Polaroids taken off the victims and also photographs of missing persons to help identify every victim who had died at his hands. When these horrifying crimes were made public, the media coverage was intense. According to a former neighbour of Dharma, there were people willing to pay $50 each to sit on a couch that the serial killer had given her, and were also willing to pay extra just to hold a glass that the serial killer had once drank from. So what happened to the apartment of horrors? Following his arrest, the entire apartment building where Dharma carried out these gruesome crimes was demolished. After several tenants vacated the premises and unsurprisingly, nobody really wanted to live there anymore. So what do you think of Jeffrey Dharma's apartment of horrors? Should the building have been abolished or left to stand as a reminder of the dark side of human nature? We would love to hear your opinions below or if you have any suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for even more serial killer content.